My dear brothers and sisters, we are welcome ourselves to a new week where we try to conclude our teachings, our studies, our reflection on the saints, the canonization of saints, how saints are declared, as others would like to call it, they would, would want to see the making of the saints. And as you would know, this declaration takes place here at the Vatican, and you would see just up here, just at this place, that is where the Pope will stand to declare that uh, there is a saint. Just at the, that balcony there, the Pope declares, or he will be at the Vatican Square to remember. So, seated uh, at the background of the St. Peter's uh, Basilica or the St. Peter's Square, is very, very significant in discussing such an, an important, uh, such an important discussion for today. Okay. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us pray. Lord, our God, we know that you wish us to become great saints in your kingdom. Please bless us that we may live lives that will lead us to become holy saints. We wish to praise and give you glory here on earth and in your kingdom and in heaven. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the examples of the valiant men and women who accepted their call to bear witness to you in joy and in pain, in suffering and even in death. We ask your grace to be as great, courageous as they were even in the little things that befall us each day that with joy we might radiate our conviction and, and our confidence in your presence with us. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I welcome each and every one of us to this evening's session, The Making of Saints, as we have titled this to begin. And you remember that it is actually the declaration of saints, the declaration of saints, how saints are declared. So my dear brothers, I just like to do a quick review, okay? In the code of canon law, which governs the church's laws of the, which is the collection, the body of the collection of the church in canon 1403, the canon states that, the canon states clearly that special pontifical laws govern the course of the canonization of the saints of God. So you remember that the very first level of somebody becoming a saint is what we call when the when we say the person has become a servant of god 
So instead of calling them that the laws govern the canonization of saints, the code states that the, the, the laws govern the cause of the canonization of the saints of God. That means that it is the saints of God who graduate or who are revealed, who are given a divine revelation for us to be able to declare, for the church to be able to, to declare that these saints, these servants of God, are actually saints for our reverence. Okay, so it is necessary that being canonized as a saint means a lot of things to us. And last week we had the opportunity to be able to join and then know what it means to, when we say that somebody is a saint, we have dealt with sainthood as is in the Old Testament and sainthood as is in the New Testament. And we have looked, we have been looking at sainthood as in the Christian sense, in the Christian sense. So all of us are saints, but those of our brethren who have gone ahead of us, marked with the sign of faith, who have been declared to be in heaven, have also the title of saints. And this, these are the category of persons that we have been considering when we look at the making of saints or the canonization of saints. So nobody should get scandalized and say that everybody is a saint. Of course we know everybody who is baptized, who is dedicated to God is a saint. But we are looking at those who have gone ahead of us marked with the sign of faith, marked with the sign of faith. And as we said, these are some of the things that are happening to when they are marked with the sign of faith. Their names are added to the catalog of saints. They may be invoked in public prayers. Remember, if a saint has not been declared, they may not be invoked in a public worship or public gathering, okay? Then churches may be dedicated to the saint's memory. The masses can be offered to the saints. Feast days are celebrated on the saint days. Images of the saints may be made in which his or her head may be surrounded by a halo. You know that when you see the pictures of Mary, Joseph, all the saints, you see that there is, you know, a kind of light around them that is the halo. Okay, that shows that they have been declared saints. So when some people are holy, yes, you may say that these people are holy, but in pictures, you may not use it because we use those pictures only to uh, indicate those who have made it with the sign of faith. Okay, saints and relics are, and okay, the saints of, of relics, and the relics of saints are in, uh, uh, given to us for public worship. And, and let me just talk about these images since I'm talking about images. You know, some friends who who do not uh, like Catholic worship or do not understand, maybe let me, let me be charitable to them. They do not understand Catholic worship, say that, why do you make certain people saints and do their pictures and things like that? But today, look all over. You find churches are now making their, their, their pastors and their men of God and their women of God pictures even bigger than that of Jesus and the saints. This is very funny and interesting. People who used to condemn making of pictures of saints and things like that, now in their churches have bigger, bigger pictures. And some of you have bundles and things on your hand of people who are still living, not yet dead. We don't even know. It is said in a can that upon chenibe wu eni ebe hu ne ting ting. Upon chenina yi on wu yen kramponu, ebi mo asha siye ekwa de omu di omu fo ni e bo 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 obu fiye. And some of you, you, you call yourselves Catholics and yet you have pictures of certain men or men of God that you think are even bigger than the saints, and you keep their pictures in your rooms, on your cars, and things like that. Well, I leave that judgment to you, but I just want to you to understand that if you, if you can ever consider people who are yet to make it to the other side, so important to you that you can consider having their pictures, then you should have no problem at all when such men who have led men and women who have lived such heroic lives are being portrayed and being given that kind of uh, you know publicity and that kind of honor in the church okay again so i continue i think that last week we had the opportunity to be looking at that okay now the the, the church looks at uh, various important things and he says that okay the canonization of the saints ensures that the people lived a holy life and that the people are in heaven. 
and that God is working through them in intercession. So when we say that somebody has been declared a saint, please remember there are so many saints that we don't know of. But those that we are talking about are those that by divine revelation and by the investigation of the church coupled with divine revelation, we can affirm, we can declare, we can save as a fact that they have made it to heaven. Okay, so if you don't find your name or your mother or somebody that you know there, please do not be worried at all. They may be saints, but we don't have the revelation to be able to make that statement. Okay, it is important that all of us, especially Catholics or those who are of the Christian faith, know that on the very day or as Pope John Paul they gave the whole world the code of canon law, at that very time, he also talked about the apostolic constitution, another law, another teaching of the church known as the Divinus Perfectionis Magister. Divinus Perfectionis Magister. Many people have never heard of this because, well, we just want to know about popular teachings. It is known as the divine teacher and the model of perfection. The divine teacher and the model of perfection. Who is Christ? The divine teacher and the model of perfection. That is the, how the title of that apostolic constitution is. In that document, the Pope, that is St. John Paul II, states that in all times, God chooses from, the, from these, men, from these uh, many who, who, following more closely the example of Christ, give outstanding testimony to the kingdom of heaven by shedding their blood or by heroic practice of virtues. Remember, so saints are basically in two categories. Either they have shed their blood or they have heroic practice. And remember, we will say that when they have shed their blood, they are called what? Martyrs. And when they've lived heroic lives, they are called what? Confessors. They are properly called what? Confessors. So now we looked at the practice or them. We are now looking at them the process of the canonization and the process of canonization starts on the diocesan level. So everybody belongs to a diocese or you belong to a local church. And then the investigations are carried on at the local church and then it goes over to the universal level. So it begins always from the local and it goes. And usually the process should start not, not earlier than five years after, than, after the death of the saints. Only the Pope may waive this. And if for some people, yes, the Pope waives it for a particular reason. And you know, one that I can remember in our day is Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa, who was not up to five years. And then uh, I think that the, the process began. Okay, so things like that, the Pope for a good reason. And of course, not all the reasons may be known because sometimes, but they give reasons also. Okay, now, Prior to the presentation of the cause to the congregation for the cause of sins, please note that there is a dicastery, a ministry, a section in the Vatican that only deals with the preparation and the investigation and the revelation of the making of, of the declaration of saints. And that dicastery is known as the Congregation for the Cause of the Saints. Okay. The diocesan bishop is under obligation to conduct an investigation in order to establish the merit of the cause of uh, the merit of the cause. Okay. For, so it is not just that you the Pope just starts and then, no, you, you there has to be that there has to be a beginning and the diocesan bishop must begin. So whatever happens, whether the person is religious, whether the person is a lay person, whether the person is a priest or whatever, the person lived in a diocese, either the diocese where the person died or where the person comes from, either of them may begin the course. Maybe the saint died here, or maybe this is a place where most of the things about the saints can what be collected. So they, that, that diocese could be the diocese where the saint, the, the cause for the sainthood can be investigated. And so when they begin like that, 
we say that yes, some things are, are very important. Consultation with the bishops of the ecclesiastical province, that is what we call the bishops' conference, must necessarily be done, okay? Inform the faithful regarding the petition, okay? The petition that is to be done, okay? So the faithful, it should not happen that it is a private matter. No, there can never anything be private about this. It is for the good of the church. So the church members, the faithful, everybody has a right to know what is happening okay then again we have submit to study the possible writings of the post uh, study the possible writings of the possible servant of god at this time we don't know whether the person is going to become a servant of god or not so it is a possible servant of god and then if the person too has written anything we study those things so i think today some of us will be very very careful sometimes you are posting things on social uh, facebook whatever whatever you may never know or you may post certain dangerous things or teachings be careful anything that you post one day when we want to study you, we will go and draw all of them. We'll go and look at your Facebook and all those things. And we shall look at the things that you post, the, the pictures, the videos, and the like. Well, I'm just warning you. And so today, if we want to know a saint for today, all those things are necessary. We'll be looking at what, if you are a priest like myself, or if you are, if you are a teacher, we'll find out what were the things that you were teaching. They would investigate everything, everything. So be careful the things that you post on social media. One day they will come after you and declare, okay. Then they will appoint experts to study the writings and the other documents related to the course, okay. Then the request for the initial upstart for the Holy See, then you would request, you request the Holy See that is there, is there nothing that impedes? So the Holy See will have to declare that nothing impedes the beginning of the process and the Holy See will give that, 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 that uh, uh, permission, that permission for it to start. So that's very, very crucial. Once the diocesan investigation is completed, now everything is sent to the Pope, to the Vatican and to the dicastery and then we will start. So the individual at this stage, it will be, the process will be, the first stage will be to declare the individual as a servant of God. To declare the individual as a servant of God. Now, what does this mean? It doesn't mean that the stage, the moment we begin the stage, you are declared a servant of God. No. First, there are investigations and then you are giving the clearance. Then there will be the investigation, the first stage, to find out whether you, whether you qualify to become what? A servant of God. So you see, so this is the one who is being considered, okay? Now, we have to consider this person who died, is there a non-declaration of non cultus That means that has the, has the death of the person created a false religion or superstition? If those are the things, then we'll be careful about those things. The bishop sends the report to Rome, where it is translated to what Italian. And then a summary of the whole thing is presented to the congregation for the cause of saints. Remember, I mentioned them already. And then these people will now what? Begin a thorough studies. Nine theologians will scrutinize everything. They do everything. And if it passes, then we will now be getting ready to move to the second stage. The second stage is where if you pass the second stage, you will now be declared what venerable. So you see, when you pass your exams, then you get the title to go to the next stage. When you pass your exams, you get the title to go to the next stage. Okay, is that right? Okay. When, in, uh, when enough information has been gathered, the congregation will recommend to the Pope and then here we are looking at the heroic works, the virtues. Okay, so first, it is pure history and investigation about the person. How did the person live? Now, they, at the second stage, they are looking at virtues. I mean, they are looking at good qualities. And the two things they are looking out for is theological virtues and cardinal virtues. So remember, the way you live your life is one thing. The way you live your life is one thing, but also the way what you exhibit the virtues. Virtue is the character, is the is your attitude, is your is is, is your is your is, is your tendency towards certain important things. And when we say theological virtues, there are three: faith, hope, and love. 
how does the person live his faith? How did the person live his faith, his hope or his or her hope? And then charity, love. And then they will look at what? The, 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 the very four important cardinal virtues. When we say cardinal virtues, that means that the hinge, the hinges of everything. One, prudence. Two, justice. Three, fortitude. And then four, temperance. How you were what? Whether you just did everything like that. It was no, you know, control in your life. Or you did things with, or you did things with what? A lot of control and justice, your courage and everything. So all those things will be checked, okay? From this point, the person is declared to be what? If the person is found to be full of heroic virtue, now you call the person what? Venerable. So now you have passed class two and you go to the venerable stage. At this stage, remember, as we said, a venerable has not yet a feast day. No churches may be built in their honor. So when the person is a venerable, please, we do not have public worship or public invocation of them as yet. You may make cards and everything like, like that, but not what? Not to pray for, not to pray and invoke them in public, please. Remember, everybody may be invoked in your private prayer. You may ask your mother or your father or somebody who knows in your own small private prayer. But when it is a public prayer where there are two or more persons, please do not scandalize anybody by doing what you want. Please, that is not right. Okay, so this brings us to where we ended off last week. And here is the summary of what we have. There are, there are four important stages of the canonization process. Number one, the servant of God. Number two, the venerable, that is heroic virtue, where we look at the faith, hope, and charity, and then the cardinal virtues of prudence, justice, and fortitude. Then we move to the third stage, where we call the beatification. And then the last stage, where we call what? The sainthood, when you are declared finally and completely what a saint. Okay, so this is what we have been looking at. So I will continue from there. And I know that you are also eager to know what happens. Now, we continue here and the third stage requires a miracle. At the third stage, because you are going to be declared a saint, a, a blessed, you, it needs a miracle. So miracles are needed at this stage. Now, the, 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 if before the miracles are, okay, or what we are looking, what are we looking out for? Now, beatification is a statement. When you say somebody is blessed, it is a statement. It is an official statement by the church that somebody is in heaven, but has, we have, at least there is the statement. This step depends on whether the saint is what? the venerable is a martyr or a confessor. So remember, there are two basic categorizations of saints here. We have martyrs and we have, we have confessors. If we have time, I would also talk about the seven categorizations where you would understand also the bigger usage of the confessor. Okay, so when we say a person is a martyr, we are only referring to a person who dies in the process of witnessing to their faith. And when we say a confessor, confessor refers to all those who witness to their faith in a heroic manner. Remember, heroic manner, we are looking at the virtues of what? The theological virtues, and we are looking at also what? The cardinal virtues. You must be outstanding in these. Apart from your life history, which will make you a servant of God, you must be heroic, you must be heroic in what? In your, in your, in your life. And then, and then in the third stage, there must be a miracle. There must be a miracle. But is it everybody who needs a miracle? No, not everybody needs a miracle. The lives of the saints make it clear that there, there's a witness, that is important. So not everybody needs what a miracle. The person who is a martyr does not need a miracle. So if you are only declared a martyr at the stage of venerable, you may be declared what a martyr straight away. That means that you are what you 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 are you are a servant of God with heroic what a, a character, and you died for the faith. 
So no miracle. So you may, it may just end there. So you'll be declared a martyr, and that's all. But apart from that, you may also there may also be what miracles for others, which may now help to declare certain people what saints. So when we say a person is a saint over and above, also being what all martyrs are saints in that sense. Okay, but that uh, we say that when we say that. Um, other confessors, it means that they go on, they were not martyred. So they would need by all means a miracle, a miracle. What are some of the miracles that will make a person a saint? You know how sometimes in speaking, I say will make a person a saint. Please pardon me if ever I say that it is only, well, that will make the, the, the whole declaration of the saint very, very clear. It's just common language or link that makes us me say things like that okay now when considering a reported miracle when we say that it means that through the confessor now you know who a confessor is through the venerable now you know who the venerable is now through the servant of god who has become a venerable if the venerable through the persons the, the, through the intercession of that person there is a miracle that miracle is that will result will result in what the person being declared blessed meaning that the person has entered heaven but has not attained the full status yet okay so if the experts now at this stage when there is a miracle that miracle is given to medical scientific and theological experts three categories of persons medical experts scientific experts and theological experts who will examine the miracle and if the experts can find no no human explanation how such a thing is possible to happen then they will present their findings back to the church and say that as far as their knowledge is concerned, there is no human explanation to such a phenomenon. But they do not declare that such a person is a saint or not. They only declare and state that as far as they are concerned, there is no human explanation be it medical, be it scientific, be it theological, there is no explanation to the possibility of that happening. Okay, so that's what they say as far, and they are renowned, renowned, renowned uh, experts in that sense. Okay, so now other phenomena may be investigated as miracles after a would-be saint's death to include the following. So one is that, please, there is what the, 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 the miracles are there. But some other things that we, in the miracles, we look out for what healings attributed to the intercession of the saint. Okay, so healings that cannot be explained except by what divine uh, uh, explanation okay then we also have what we call the incorruptibility where the saint's body after it has been exhumed after remember that i we explained that last week that there will be the process of the exhuming of the body okay if only the body can be found so that they will study it when the, the body is for example saint catherine of saint catherine of siena siena when her body was exhumed it was still what fresh it was still fresh look at her body that you see portrayed down there now it is not only saint Ca uh, catherine of of siena this is padre pio this is padre pio who and then uh, this one's also padre pio who died in the last century not too long ago and then also we have right now saint john the 23rd Papa Buono, okay, if you go to the Vatican right now, those of you who have visited the Vatican, you see the, you see uh, St. John the 23rd lying down there, as if fresh, that's how when they exhumed the body, he was almost looking at him, his body was not corrupt, corrupted. These are miracles that are not explainable by any science or theology or medicine. 
how does a body, a person who has died, his body die? And you remember that St. Anthony, I cannot finish without talking about St. Anthony being the parish priest of St. Anthony Catholic Church. I have to mention that St. Anthony, his tongue up to today is preserved, still fresh, still fresh, what? Because of God. So this is a miracle. Only God can make such things you know, happen. So the one is healing. Two is incorruptibility, where the body of the person or some parts of the body does not get corrupted. Okay. So again, we also have what we call liquefaction, liquefaction, where the body, for example, uh, the, the dry, dry blood becomes what? Uh, the blood of saints becomes liquid on certain times of the year, like that of Saint, uh, Saint Januarius, Saint Januarius of Napoli or Naples, as is said in, in English, sub 9th September, okay, so 9th, 19th September, okay. And then the order of sanctity, there is order of sanctity where certain saints, after they have died, instead of their bodies or their place of burial, exuding you know a stench of a bad smell there will be rather what there will be rather a, a a nice exuding exuding you know fragrance of the today is the look at what saint uh, saint january today is the feast of san janeiro or saint januarius a bishop who was martyred around the year 300 and who's the patron saint of naples not much is known about his life, but he's famous for a miracle that occurs a few times every year in Naples. The liquefaction of a relic of his blood contained in a glass tube. Hello, I'm Father James Kabicki, and I have to admit that I often wonder why a miracle like this occurs. And it is a miracle. According to one author, few, if any, alleged miracles have been examined more carefully, more often, or by people of more divergent views than this one. And no expert, however much an unbeliever in miracles, denies that what is said to take place does in fact take place. What takes place is that the dark substance becomes a liquid on certain days of the year, and that no variations in temperature or other natural reasons can explain it. So, if this is indeed a miracle, why would God do this? Maybe it's to show that miracles do indeed happen, and to challenge our scientific age to be more humble, and accept the fact that not everything can be explained by natural causes. That there may be supernatural causes at work in the world, this is certainly our belief as Christians. We don't believe that God created the world like a great clockmaker who, after making his instrument, then set it on a shelf to tick away by itself. We believe that God can and does intervene in the world. That's what the Bible is really all about, that God hasn't ignored us and is indeed at work in the world. So, whether you believe that what happens to the relic is miraculous or not, Believe in an even greater miracle, that God loved us enough to become one of us and even die for us. So that's also that. I think I would have loved to see the, the other of St. Teresa of Lisieux. Also, his, her body was every nine months after the death, her death. If you go to the grave, her body was exuding with fragrant, you know, nice aromatic, you know, you know, smell. It was so beautiful. So, you know, these are things that happen next time I could show that to you. Okay, so again, we have extraordinary events during the life of the saints are reported and uh, maybe things like that. So sometimes maybe after the saints death, things happen and those are called miracles either the healing, liquefaction, or the odor, or the nice, you know, scent, all those things. Apart from that, during the life of certain people, they, they, they have certain experiences, and some of them are investigated at this stage, and then they will be seeing whether, did they really come from God or not? And they may help in the declaration of the saint to be in heaven. One example is what we call the levitation, the levitation. Levitation is, if you know about St. Joseph of Copertino, he was a saint, a, a young a saint who, who, who always, whenever he entered into meditation, he would just be 
raised up like that. There are so many other persons who also had this kind of also the gift. When they pray, you see that they will be lifted up from the floor, either very high or at least you see that that's called and then it must be investigated. We have also what we call the stigma, the stigma where people have, especially in their palms or in their side or on their leg, or where the Jesus had the wounds, the five wounds, okay? You, one of them. So people, there are people who also experience that, like St. Francis of Assisi, Padre Pio, and the, and the like, okay? So, and then also we have by location, by location, where certain people can be seen at two places at the same time. And I think one good person is uh, um, uh, Padre Pio, Padre Pio, he could be seen in one country and another country at the same time. And sometimes there were people who were reported who were going for the, in, during the, the war, the war, they were flying airplanes, you know, in the air and they saw Padre Pio in the air making battle with the what with and then a lot of you know um, uh, pilots who were not even christians saw him standing in the air making battle with the devil and after the war they converted they converted so these are things that can be done so a feast day will will be designated so when the person is declared a blessed a feast day will be designated but its observance is normally restricted to just a small place, not to the entire church now, except so normally you will not name churches after the blessed, except there is a connection to the blessed. You would wait for them to be declared what? Saints. Normally, I said normally. So except the bishop and they will ask permission and then it will be what? Granted and then you could use if there is a connection between the church and that blessed, yes. A church may be named after that, but otherwise parishes may not be named after that. Okay. So after at this stage, the person is a blessed. And when the person is blessed, now you need another miracle for the person to be declared or sin. So two miracles are needed. One for you to be declared blessed and two for you to be declared what a saint. You remember as the scripture says, at the witness of two, a statement, a word, a, a judgment shall be made. So two, two what miracles are needed. Two miracles are needed. If any miracles are reported, which qualify the person for canonization, the pre prefect presents the cause to the Pope to decide. So after the miracle has been declared, has, has been found out and studied by the experts, the, the medical, the science, the theology, and all those people. Now, the prefect for that congregation will present the whole thing to the Pope. And the Pope will now will pray over it and discern. And he will now make, so it is a statement of the Pope spoken ex cathedra, means that he speaks from his chair, from his chair or from his office as the leader of the church and he speaks so and it is a statement of infallibility please remember that canonization is considered a function of papal infallibility as is important so believers must understand that when somebody is declared a saint it is not maybe he's in heaven or maybe it is not in heaven the pope declares and you would understand why it goes on so just just as a way of um i told you that they are Typically, two categories of what saints they are uh, or, or of the saints. You have the martyrs, and we have what the confessors. But today, today we have seven traditional categories. So that's the, this is maybe good for us. The first ones are called the apostles. The next ones are called the evangelists. Then we have what we call the martyrs. Then we have those we call the confessors. And in this case, when we are using or speaking about the categories of this seven category, confessors now become males, now become men who are what? Who become, uh, who are, uh, who, who confess their, their, their lives to the faith, okay? Then we also have doctors of the church. Then we have virgins, virgins of the church, okay? So the confess, and then we have the last one, holy women, 
holy women. So as we have the confessors, we also have the holy women. When we say somebody is a doctor of the church, it means that that person, the person's writing, apart from the person being holy, the person's writing is solid, is classic, is something that is considered angelic, that is seen that only God could have, have revealed it to such a person. And one typical of such persons is what saint thomas aquinas saint thomas aquinas who is known as the angelic writer saint angelic writer of course saint anthony my own saint is also a doctor of the church okay now the canonization process takes place in this way and that brings us to the end okay the canonization pro process takes place in this way the ceremony is conducted as follows the saint's life is read as on the day of the canonization, the whole life of the saint, I mean, the summary of the life of the saint is read out to everybody during the mass. It must take place during the mass. Remember, it is during in the mass that the whole thing, because every, I mean, it is, that's, mass is the summit of all our everything. And at this time, during the, the during that time, the Pope chants the following in Latin. So you may not understand the Latin. So translation is in the English. So he speaks in honor of the blessed Trinity. Now remember, the declaration of the saint is in honor of God. So he says in honor of the blessed Trinity. I think most of us just are interested in the saints. That's all. But we are not interested in how the whole thing takes place. The Pope says in honor of the blessed Trinity for the exaltation of the Catholic faith. That means that, that the faith of the people will go far, that we will all understand the Catholic faith well, and for the growth of the Christian life. So saints are given to us so that we will look at them as true examples in our growth to Christian life. And he says, now with the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the blessed Oh, and then the authority of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul. Wow. And then our own. So remember, every pope is a pope on his own, even though he sits on the throne of Peter. And then he will say, after a lengthy reflection, you see how, how long it takes before sins are made, okay? And having assiduously invoked God's assistance. So throughout the whole process, right from the beginning, the whole process takes place in the atmosphere of prayer and reflection, not by popular sayings, okay? So having invoked God's assiduous assistance and taking into account the opinion of many brothers of ours in the episcopate. So the Pope will listen to the bishop, the diocesan bishop of the place where the person died and the person worked and all the other bishops concerned. Now the Pope will say, we declare and define. Wow. He says, we declare and define that, that so, so, and so to be a saint. One, two, and we enroll him or her in the catalog of the saints. So now that person's name is added to the catalog, to the list of saints in the Catholic Church that can be invoked, that can be used as models. And then he goes on to say, and we established that in the whole church, he or she, sorry, should be devoutly honored among the saints. Now you see, among the saints, he or she, and then he will, he will finish in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the Pope speaks this ex cathedra in an infallible manner, meaning that there is no doubt of what, whether it is, it is true or not true. It is absolutely true. It is absolutely true. So, at this time, the person is officially recognized as a saint at this point, and a large tapestry, that means that a, 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 a how do you call it, a, 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 a picture that is hand-woven or woven is now made of the picture 
of the saint. It is woven because you see, it tells you the kind of work that has gone on in the declaration of the saint. And the example that we can see is the example of Mother Teresa. So you see the tapestry that is being, that is there, such a large tapestry, big, is huge, is huge, 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 that is there. And it will hang for days, it will hang for days, that is there. So with this, the you as her name, or now Saint Mother Teresa, has been added to the catalog of the saints. And after at this stage, we can say that a saint has been declared for the Catholic Church. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So at this stage, I will open the, the phone lines and uh, we would be able now to ask our questions or bring our contributions and we will be able to now contribute towards the discussions that have taken place. Okay. If there are questions, you may ask them directly. Please, if you unmute yourself, anybody, you can unmute yourself, okay? And if you cannot um, unmute yourself, just send a message or um, raise your hand and we would find ways of helping you to uh, ask your question, to ask your question. Okay, now. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, please, uh, yeah, is it, po this Richard? Good evening, Father. Good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful, this is my first time. Great. Yeah, uh, I started to listen from you. I'm, I'm very happy, and I'll make sure I'll continue to listen to your preaching. Oh, you but, are all yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I, I would like to make a request that uh, the writings, if you can forward it, it uh, on uh, WhatsApp so that we can, it will be a sort document for some of us to. Okay. Always remember. Okay. You may pick the, the the YouTube, the YouTube version of everything that we have done today from the YouTube. Raymond is one. Okay. okay. That's what okay. we give out. So the whole video will be on YouTube. If you go to Raymond is one at I S O N E, you type Raymond is one, all the teachings you would find. So with the okay. YouTube, you will be able to find the teachings there and then you'll be able to do it. What do you want to do with it? Okay. Okay. Thank I'm you, Richard. Good. And I'm very happy that uh, uh, you came. I don't know how you have gotten here. Did somebody recommend to you or how have you been you have been able to get since today's your first time on? Yeah. No, you, you WhatsApp me. I'm okay. A, a, and it's been the first time that you have made time for it. Okay. You, no, I, I didn't even know. It was uh, today, last night, I saw the. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, go ahead. So I decided to make Thank time you. to join. I think you can also invite somebody to be online every Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, and every morning we have morning devotion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've I've seen it. Listen, uh, my wife and this. I will make it in the, the what do you call it? I put in my laptop so that Thank every you. evening like this, my family will participate. Thank you. As for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. That is great. Great is speaking to us. Yes, I see Joseph Miles Myers. Uh, Father, hey, Joseph. Yes, please. Yo, what you me Father, me I want to ask. Hello. Yes, please. Is it the same as aura, or is different something? Hello. Which one? Yes, the hello. aura. Is, hello. The aura is also the, the light. Yes, yes, the yes, same yes. as aura. Yes, aura. it's also the, yes, yes. Ah, okay. The, the aura, yes. Okay. That you mean what is around the head when we when we make pictures of the of, of saints, yes, the aura or the halo, yes, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. Good. It's been a long time. God bless you, Joseph, for coming. Okay. Okay. So every okay, I see Onia Francis. Yeah, Onia Francis, please. Nia Francis, you are you are you are you are muted, so you are unmuted, you can talk. 
Francis Onia. Okay. Our brother also sends, he says, Marias Fernandez Coronel by location. So she was a nun who died in 1602. So just for, and then we also have what we call the aromatic smell, like that of St. Teresa of Avila. St. Teresa of Avila. Okay. Then um, somebody says that, Padre, from the presentation you mentioned, we can invoke our parents and loved ones in our private prayers. I want, I want clarity on this, please. Can I call on my dead father to pray for me? In your private prayer, yes. If you believe that your brother or your father or your parent had a good life and you, thought, you think that, you know, because you know that they led a good life in your private life, you can ask them, yes, if you believe that. Okay, that's good. Nokia, Nokia. Onya Francis, are you there? Okay. Yes, I'm there. Yeah. Would Bye -bye. you have a question or contribution, please? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, a question. I want yes. to know about uh, Archbishop Derry's uh, one canonization. Okay. Is there a special committee that? It's linked from Rome monitoring his in our country here since he was not since he was buried here. Okay, thank you very much. That's my you, question, please, Father. Okay, thank you very much. By all, once you know that the the canonization process has started, you must take you must know for sure that yes, a committee has been set up. Yes, the bishops' conference has been informed. Yes, the laity have been formed. If you don't do these things, you can't even begin. Do you understand? Okay. So these are things that must be done. And you must establish those things. And Rome must now look at all these things to give the clearance for the whole process to officially begin. Thank you, you Father. Understand? So there is a committee and there are people who are listening. Maybe, who knows, one of them may be on this line and I speak and is going to uh, also. So yes, yes, and may even want to share some experience about what has happened so far. Okay, you, good. Thank you, Onia Francis, yeah. Welcome. <clears throat> Please, anybody can, you can just unmute yourself and ask your question, okay? So, Another person says, the Knights of Marshall are currently working on the beatification of Sir Marshall, Sir James Marshall. He helped reintroduce the Catholic Church in West Africa. And then, are, there, uh, are we then saying he is a venerable now? Not at all, please. Not at all. Please, we, before you state some of these things, we must know what is the stage. Remember, first, you don't start from even venerable. You start off by just, the whole thing must start from a diocese. So we must ask, which diocesan priest is processing this thing? And has the bishop conference agreed to that? And so as a, as a, as a, I'm just using this as an example, individuals cannot begin the process of what canonization. It must be presented to the a diocesan bishop and the diocesan bishop must begin also the process of informing the bishop's conference, of informing the laity, of informing the whole church. I mean, it must be presented to the, 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 uh, the congregation. And the congregation must give their nehel upstart, meaning that, yes, they are clearance. And then that person will be declared to be what? A servant of God. So if you have documents to prove all those that, then you say that, yes, the process has started. But if you are only thinking about it, then you cannot say that, yes, you have started any process at all. So you only, start the, you only say the process has really started when at least the person has been declared a servant of God. Okay, good. Is anybody online wanting to ask any question? Okay. A brother also says, Father, this is beautifully presented. Thank you very much. I have learned a lot. Thank you, brother, for your encouraging words also. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody with a question? Yes. Who wants to be a saint? At least declared a saint. <laughs> okay. Another person says, merci beaucoup. The person who asked the question on the marshal says, merci beaucoup. 
Mm -hmm. I also respond by the Qua. Okay, good. Now, Nokia 6.1, do you have uh, a father, question contribution? Yes, uh, Father, I have a question. Yes. I just want to uh, ask if one is being declared as a saint mm -hmm. and centuries or 200 years after, there's something relation negative against such a person. Can such a person's uh, faith being declared to him be revoked? Or so far as he has been declared, that's the end. Thank you very much. Now, you understand that, um, number one, the fact that a person had a negative in his life doesn't mean that the person cannot be a saint. Otherwise, St. Paul cannot be a saint. So you must get that clear. The fact that a person had a negative in his life doesn't mean that the person cannot be declared a saint because people change. So it depends on the time where that thing happened and whether that person kept that uh, negative thing throughout his or her life to the very end. That is one. Okay, but you have to also understand such question is based on the presumption that there will be mistakes. Remember, this is a statement of faith. And when you declare a statement of faith, we know that what has been declared is true and nothing will be found. So I cannot give in to that hypothesis or theory that something negative for that matter will be found. My faith tells me that it will not be found. Thank you, you yes, please. Okay. And so far, none has been found. Let's just put the records right. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. I, I am a diehard Catholic. I believe that what the church is. I'm a very diehard Catholic. Yeah. Not because I'm a diehard Catholic. I know what the church teaches is right. Okay. Yes, Father, thank you. Mm. Some <laughs> also say that, good evening, Father. God bless you so much. I have really enjoyed the teaching for today. Thank you very much for your kind words. My sister is here, Gloria. Did I see your hand up? Okay, Gloria. Yes, Father. <laughs> okay, Gloria. Yes, yes Father. Um, I'd like to ask, mm -hmm. with all the explanation you've given, it appears there's a lot, lot of work that goes into this. A lot. Um, so I want to know the monetary requirement. Is it very expensive? Because with all this gathering of information, I presume there will be a lot of money needed to be doing all of that. If so, who bears the cost? Is it the diocese the person comes from or Rome or who bears the cost? If it is costly, is that the reason why we do not have um, many saints from our part of the world? Because in Ghana, it appears it's only Cardinal Derry who is in the process of being canonized. Is that the reason why? So my question is about the monetary aspect. Is it very expensive with what you are saying? It appears it will be. Okay. Thank you. I'd loved your question so much until you brought in the African part. <laughs> <laughs> well, Father, obviously we are not rich. Well, I, we you know, know. Um, um, I think that, like I said, I'm a very diehard Catholic. Or I believe, you know, um, um, I think your, your question was so objective until you brought in the, the African part. Okay. Uh, I don't, there are two questions that must be separated. Okay. okay. It, it may be costly or not costly. That is a fact that could be there. Why we have not had many African saints can also be another question. But to try and put the two phenomena together, two phenomena together is not, is not, um, it's, a, it's, 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 it's not the best to say so. Okay. So I'd like okay. to look at them okay. first. Okay. okay. Number one is that, yes, the process, like any other process, can be uh, tedious. But the DAOs, the, 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 if the, the DAOs, the person belongs and the people who have seen contribute. And the church itself, wanting to have, wanting to have, people who are worth 
emulating, support that. But it must be proven that it is worth a venture following. Do you understand? Otherwise, yes, there will be all that there will be a, any kind of proposal. And before you try, you start, you just go on, go on, and then you just uh, it just dies there. Mm. Do you understand? So yes, there will be the need for the, the the those who have seen to put in their might to begin. And when the thing by itself is worthy of it, there is always the support that comes with it. In Akan, they say that Abuwa Onidia. If, and that the, and all those will become part of the miracles that will help in declaring the saints. I believe okay. so. Do you understand? We are dealing yes. with we are dealing with an act of faith. And even if there are human elements that are there, I believe that the divine aspect of it always triumphs over individual uh, and human tendencies. That is what I believe in. Okay. okay. And I don't yeah. doubt the fact that there will be some human tendencies in there and it may impede the process. In some it's 21 hours. But at the end, God will have his way. Are we good? Okay. okay. Yes, now, Father, look you. at even the teaching that we are just having. A lot of people are saying and sending messages that we didn't even know. We didn't even know. You see, so that is it. Now, sometimes you must ask yourself, how old is the Catholic Church in the diocese that you come from? I don't know which diocese you come from. Okay. For myself. If you are in Ghana. Okay. If you are in Ghana, are you there? Yes, I'm here. If you are in Ghana, the oldest church is not more than 200 years in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you look at the if you look at the other churches, some of them are as old as 1,800 years, 1,000 years and co. So they have had many years of witness, and they have had people who have bought, shared the faith over centuries. We have only gone through one century or now hitting the second century. Would you think that we will be able to compare with people who have lived 10, 11, 12, 18 centuries of Christianity? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you with me, my sister? I'm, I'm there, Father. No. So we should not play the, 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 the African or the black man because we are black mm -hmm. or because we are African. Um, uh, we know that, yes, that is always sometimes a problem, but we should not allow this to enter this holy, holy discussion. Okay. Okay. I hope thank I you, Father. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Somebody says, please, Father, have there been evidence or testimonies from individuals who prayed through St. Anthony and found their lost items? Hey, yes. my sister. Yes. Okay, you see, now you are getting people answer. Please, is there anybody else on the line? Somebody says, me too, me too, me too. Somebody is sending another, is sending it on the line. Hey, me too, Father, me too. Ah, okay, there's another lady. Oh, so please. Me? <laughs> I don't have to answer you. Please, the people on the line are there. They are answering you. Richard, Alberta, Anna, and somebody also on the line. Tony is also, they all say, me too, me too, me too. So please. Uh, me too. Yes. And you know, as for Tony. And me too, Father. And you too. And you too. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. And somebody says, how do parishes get their names from saints? Well, the, the, the people suggest the names and the bishop approves it. The people suggest the names and the, the people and the bishop what approves it. Okay, yes. Okay. Or the priest, yes. Is there any other, please? Yes, sir. My dear saints, I hope we are not just learning these things for some people to become saints and then you will not also become a saint. <laughs> Nokia 6, do you still have a question? No, Father. Okay, no. good. 
Albertina, you are unmuted. You have a question, please. Yeah, I was just sending it to you that how long does it take from being a servant uh, to servant of God. The, the servant of God to the final um, uh, saint saint when yes. because I, I, I as as long as it takes God to reveal. Oh. 20, so, 30, 20 years, 30 years. 150 years. Oh, Thank you, Father. Yes, it can take that. And you see, look at what I'm saying. Even 150 years. If I say yes. 150 years, imagine how long the church in Ghana has. Is it 150? <laughs> oh, so you understand that these yes. things take, take a while, take a time. Yes. 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 We have Charles Yabua. Charles <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Now, I think that we are ending off. Hmm. And I want to thank all of you for your great, great, great support for this ministry. I really want to thank each and every one of you. Nokia 6, are you back with a question? No further thanks. Okay, good. Okay. I want to really thank each and every one of you for your support. Please, this teaching goes on every Monday and every Wednesday, every Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock. As long as God gives us the strength, we will continue. But you are the ones who have to help in the propagation of this. Every one of us has a duty. If you cannot come directly, you may follow it by, by, by YouTube. What is important is not that you are here directly, but is that you learn. And after you have learned, you have to go and tell somebody. Today, we are celebrating the Feast of St. Bartholomew, 24th of August. And he was called by Philip, his brother. And then he had little doubt and said, can anything come out of Nazareth? Maybe you are thinking, can anything come out of such a Zoom meeting? Well, we don't want it big, but we want it with quality. The people that are on this line, please, each and every one of us, let us take our time and study. Whether you are Catholic or not is not that which is important. What is important is that you have a solid relationship with Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is your friend. And one day you can stand at the right side of God when he comes. I thank you all because one day we shall be with the saints. I want to be counted in the number. I seriously want to be counted in the number. It doesn't mean that we don't have mistakes. Sometimes when we hear about the saints, we are only thinking that these are perfect men and women. The saints were just like you and I. If you just want to know how they were, just look at the life of St. Paul. He was a murderer. Look at the life of Peter. He was somebody who denied Jesus face to face directly. The saints had their own mistakes and sins. But one thing that distinguished them, they learned in humility to confess their sins. And God raised them up. I know that God will raise you up also. Bow your heads and let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, my God, I want one day that you will consider us when you call out your sins. Father, not that our names may be mentioned, that, that we will have a relationship with you. Father, I lift up my hand and pray, and I bless all who have heard my voice and all who will be hearing my voice, that we will fall in love with becoming saints. Saints on earth, saints in heaven. 
and we will bring many other souls into your kingdom. Holiness, dedication, and compassion. May this be our watchword. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord Amen. be with you all. And with yes. your spirit. And with the your spirit. God bless you, saints of God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Amen. Amen. Thank you all for the support of your love. Please spread.